Anesthesia is a field of medicine where we deal with patients' physiology and comfort when they come into the operation theatre for any surgical procedure. The word anesthesia comes from a Greek word which means loss of consciousness. Obviously, it is temporary loss of consciousness. I am Dr. Jayashri Simha, one of the fortunate person to have had the opportunity to start the Department of Anesthesia in this esteemed hospital. Anesthesia per se was a practically unknown uh, uh, subject ever since 1856 and the first anesthesia was given and uh, so that's why we, uh, which was on uh, 16th of October and uh, that's why we call it as World Anesthesia Day and we would like to, we are happy to celebrate that as the World Anesthesia Day. Labor analgesia, basically it means a pain-free delivery. Starting in 1847, when Jay Simpson first administered ether for labor pain relief, we have come a long way. We have revolutionized multiple techniques to relieve the pain in a parturient, that is a mother who is going through a delivery. The goals what we follow for labor pain relief are to have a mother who can participate very happily during her delivery. It should dramatically relieve her pain of labor should also render her free from any side effects for the mother as well as for the fetus. Through the years we have been doing a lot of cases under general anesthesia. We have started doing you know a lot of cases also under uh, local anesthesia or regional blocks that we say. So that in these surgeries basically the surgeons get to interact with the uh, patients during the surgery and uh, our role in these kind of surgeries comes wherein we mildly sedate the patients but at the same time keep them awake and aware enough to interact with the surgeons. I'm here to speak about general anesthesia. General anesthesia is a sleep-like condition produced by the administration of a different combination of drugs uh, just before surgery or anesthesia. Basically there are uh, four components of general anesthesia. Hypnosis, uh, analgesia, amnesia and muscle relaxation. In the process of evolution of anesthesia, we have progressed from using uh, simple uh, gases like nitrous oxide or chemicals like uh, ether and chloroform to using uh, sophisticated engineered uh, uh, anesthetic agents which uh, produce anesthesia in a predictable, rapid fashion uh, which without affecting the homeostasis of the body. There are a lot of myths about anesthesia. Uh, common, the most common one is about uh, overdosage. Anywhere in the media you see they talk about overdosage. They say a uh, patient died because of overdosage. So uh, that is actually a myth. There is uh, or, or any adverse action, any adverse reaction uh, during surgery cannot be attributed only to anesthesia. There are a lot of factors which influence the outcome of a surgery. Uh, like patient factors, intraoperative surgical uh, difficulties and intraoperative problems, including anesthet anesthetic factors also, but there are a lot of other things. It's not only anesthesia, there are a lot of factors which could affect the outcome of a surgery. Regional anesthesia is nothing but uh, giving local anesthetics for the particular area to be operated without any pain. And it has a lot of advantages. We can do a lot of surgeries under uh, regional blocks, even if the patient is unfit for uh, general anesthesia. And uh, not only that, we can uh, place in the indwelling catheters as well as we can uh, uh, connect it to the PCA pump and we can have, patient will have privilege to control their pain as long as within the hospital premises. Code blue is the term to alert the code blue team or a resuscitation team to reach the uh, area where a person has collapsed or had an cardiac arrest or the respiratory arrest. So this code blue team consists of the experts. Uh, we in our hospital has a code blue team which comprises of the ICU consultant, the anesthesiologist, cardiologist, a nursing staff, a technician who are assigned to attend this code blue calls. So what we do, we start performing the CPR. One of the important aspect of liver transplant anesthesia is patient safety. And at Manipal, we have one of the latest monitoring devices to monitor you under anesthesia. And we have advanced monitors and uh, advanced drugs to keep you safe during the surgery. Awareness is basically a partial or a complete recollection of events uh, with or without pain during anesthesia wherein you're supposed to be asleep. It can happen, uh, it can occur 
during some critical clinical circumstances or due to failure of monitoring gadgets. Um, for example, if you are critically ill and if you have a low blood pressure, uh, we wouldn't want to give you the normal dose of anesthesia because that can further reduce the blood pressure which can have more serious complications like having a heart attack or reducing blood flow to vital organs like brain and kidneys and etc. Basically, uh, we have the expertise, we have the skills and uh, equipments that can prevent awareness. Any procedure has its own complications. Of course, anesthesia has its own. It can be like from simple sore throat, nausea, vomiting to severe allergic reactions of various drugs and breathing difficulty. The anesthesia checker, PAC as we call it. Uh, what we actually do here is we take a history, your complete medical history. We note all the medications that you are taking and also we particularly note any allergy to any medications that you may have. After this we do a complete physical examination and we review all your blood tests and other investigations like your x-ray, ECG, echocardiography. The aim of this entire checkup is to determine what are your medical problems and to optimize you before you undergo surgery. Social media initially was used to communicate amongst people, share things, information, spread information. But in today's life, social media, especially the internet, is filled with all misinformation and it spreads like a wildfire. So sensationalizing a news without knowing the authenticity of it and the source can be detrimental. It can spread wrong information among the group especially when it is concerned to medicine and anesthesia. Anesthesia can be very challenging where we have to anesthetize patients who are very young, small babies as small as 500 grams to the extremes of age where we have anesthetized up to 108 years old when they come for knee replacements. ERAS, it's enhanced recovery after the surgery. In ERAS, there is a dramatic improvement in the overall experience of the patient with the surgery that is due both during and after the surgery. In ERAS protocol, we feel that patient having a very less pain and ability, improved ability to move and talk and breathe after the surgery. It is important that you read your consent form which is always given to you by your anesthesiologist once he has finished a detailed examination. In this, we mentioned some of the common side effects that you may encounter and also some of the serious ones such as drug reactions which may or may not happen but it is important that we educate you about what you may face. Let us all make the entire process of undergoing a surgery a safe one. Apart from the clinical, excellent clinical work which the department has been doing, we have a very active academic program as well. Our uh, department is recognized for National Board of Examination Training for Postgraduates in Anesthesia. And we started in 1991 itself in the beginning of the hospital by taking four candidates per year. Now we have been able to take 10 candidates and training them per year. I wish all our anesthesia colleagues a happy anesthesia day. I have grown in this hospital uh, since its inception probably from 1992. Uh, I have seen a lot of changes in the department and I feel it's always for the good. We have grown up as a department uh, from a small number to a, a, a huge number of 19 consultants. I feel proud to be a part of the department.